Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I will be showing you how to make a plugin that can create per player world borders on a Spigot server. This will also work on a paper server, which is what I'll be using in this video. Before I show you how to create the plugin, I want to go over some prerequisites. First, you are going to need a server to actually test your plugin on. You should also have some knowledge of what plugins are and what they do. Secondly, you are going to need an IDE to actually make the plugin. I will leave a download link to what I'm using in the description down below. Finally, it is not required, but we will be using GitHub a little bit in this video, so you should have a basic understanding of how to navigate it. I will give a quick explanation of how this works. While you don't actually need this information, it is always nice to know what is going on. Feel free to skip this part of the video. To put it simply, this works because of packets. Packets are little pieces of information that the server and the clients send to each other to communicate. In our use case, we will be sending a packet from the server to a player, which is a client, telling it false information about a world border. We will essentially tell the client that the server created a world border that is centered around position X and has a radius of Y. When the client receives this information, it will believe it and on the player's game, it will display a world border with the properties that we define. Obviously, it is a little more complicated than that, but that is just a quick explanation of what is going on. Luckily, in our case, we will be using an API to handle the packet sending for us. We will just have to tell it who the player is, where the world border is centered, and how big it is. Let's go ahead and do that. So now it's time to actually go ahead and create the plugin. So what I've done is I've created an empty Spigot project, which I've done by going to File, New, Project, going down to Minecraft, clicking Spigot, and then clicking Next. So after that, I added a quick test command, which is over here which right now does nothing and I will be using this to show you uh, like an example of the world border actually working so and then I've just defined it in here called it test that that's not important anyway so now what we need to go ahead and do is as mentioned earlier we're going to be using an API to handle all the package sending for us so I'm using maven so that's what I'll be showing in this video I'm going to go ahead and go to the pom.xml scroll down a little bit and we need to add a dependency so I will put this github in the description below this is what we'll be using but I'm going to go ahead and add this repository right here and then this description which again or not description dependency sorry is from the github page here and we need to specify a version so I'm going to be using 1.18.2 for this um, you have to specify the Minecraft version you're using, which you can find here. So I'm going to go here, tags, and then for 1.18.2, it's going to be this. So I'm going to go ahead and replace my version with that, like so. Reload my project, and then it'll be added. So now that we have the dependency actually in our project, we can go ahead and make use of it. So the first thing we're going to want to do, go to your main class. And then in the on enable thing, we need to add a couple lines of code. I'm going to go ahead and paste it. If you want, you can pause the video, copy this. You need this here, and then these two lines in your on enable method. Okay, now that you've gotten that, we can actually go ahead and make use of this. So I'm going to go over to my test command. Like I said, this is what I'm going to be using today to show you this working. So I'm going to do main, so my main class here the world border API and then all I have to do is set world border and then I have to specify a player a size and then a location so I'm going to specify my player here which I'm getting from up here uh, the size let's make it 20 so 10 blocks on each side and then the location we don't actually have to specify one by default it will use the player's location but let's specify a location so i'm going to go ahead and make a new location uh get the player's world because we don't need anything special going to do it at zero uh the y does not matter and then zero so it'll be a world border that is centered around zero zero with a size of 20. now there are two more things that we have to do before we can build our plugin and put it on our server so the first thing we have to do is go back to GitHub. Uh, like I said, go find the version you're going to be using. 
I'm using 1.18.2, so this is perfect for me. I'm gonna go over to releases, click this here, and then we need to download a plugin. So in my case, this one is what I'm going to be using. So just click this, download it. And then after that, you're going to want to go ahead and go to your server, go to your plugins folder, and then just throw this in here. Gotta move stuff around. But just like that, it's now in our server. And then the last thing we have to do is come back here, go to our plugin.yml, and add a depend. So what this is going to do is, meaning our plugin will not load until the world border API plugin does. So all I have to do is add world border API, just like that. And then now we are good to go. We can build our plugin, which I'm gonna go over to Maven here, uh, plugins, and then, not plugins, this one and then package. So it's going to go ahead, do that for me. Might take a little bit of time, but once that's done, I'm gonna go here, target, and then we have our plugin here. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, drag this out of here into our server, and then I have mine running. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it really quickly. And then once this stops, I can go ahead, start it again, and then all we have to do is go into the server and I will show you it working. All right, my server has finished starting up. I'm in it now, as you can see, and there's nothing going on, no world border, but that's because remember, I'm using a command to show you it. So I'm gonna go ahead, run that command. As you'll see, my world border's over here. Now this is because if you look at my coordinates, we centered it around zero, zero. So if I want something I can do, this is extra, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna do it for the sake of this video, is the size, I'm actually going to do integer.parsin and then the first argument I pass in. So I'm gonna go ahead and package this, restart my server, and I will be right back. All right, so now that I've done all that, again, that's not needed, but what I can do is actually slash test, and then if I put 20, going to do the same thing it did before with a size of 20 but if I do I don't know 100 it'll make it bigger because remember this here specifies the size um, you may have noticed that when I rejoined if I go ahead and do that that the world border is no longer there so that's because it's using packets and the world border doesn't actually exist so whenever a player joins, you will have to set it again. Uh, if you teleport them into a new world, um, I know that's a case where you have to set it again. Um, not sure about normal teleporting though. You'll have to test that on your own, but you can just quickly set it and then it's there. And I cannot fly outside it. So that's how to create per player world borders. Um, and then I wanna give credit where credit is due. Like I said, I did not make this. I am using this guy's uh, API here, which I'll link down below. All credits will go to him. Thank you again for making this API. And that is it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. If you really liked it and you enjoy what I do, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to try to make more videos like this in the future. So let me know what you guys want to see. I will see you guys next time. Peace.